filming or are you? No, filming, yeah. But like there'll, there'll be no sound ah. over it. I don't know what I'll put over it. Somebody made a comment on my YouTube video actually the other day. It was just, his laugh is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Shit hurts, man. But at this point in time, I'm still like trying to make money. So. Were you into stand up comedy when you were younger? Is that something you liked? Or like what got you into comedy in general? Yeah, I'd say uh, <clears throat> I liked watching stand up on TV. I liked watching, like, I watched Eddie Murphy Delirious a lot and uh, Dennis Leary. And then I started watching George Carlin, and that's when I started really liking stand up. And, um, yeah, I, I always did like it, and it was something that always interested me to do, but, you know, there's really nowhere to do it around here, to, starting, in the, but there was, like, an outlet for sketch and acting and stuff, so I did that, and then once I got to Toronto, I s kept up with sketch because I, you know, just developed myself with it so much, and then eventually it was, you know, saw stand-up as being the thing to start doing, so, yeah. I really, I always, obviously really liked doing stand-up, but, yeah, it was just hard to, to get it going around here. Do you still watch sketch comedy at all, or? No, I don't really watch. Yeah, I don't really watch comedy that much. Like I just because I'm there, I'm in it all the time. I think, and it's just like I'm like you know. Sometimes I'll watch something, but I, I don't. I don't opt for comedy movies. Like I'll, I like you know something more serious to watch and stuff like that. Like my favorite show on TV now is Breaking Bad. I like watching stuff like that that has like there's a little bit more gravity to it. I don't know why people watch comedy. I don't get it. <laughs> when you go to write a joke. Are you, uh, do you have the intention of making some type of social commentary or no, political it's, commentary? Or? It's just, it, whatever, um, I think of that type of stuff more than, um, uh, often than not. So, if I'm watching the news or reading the news or just experiencing things, doing things, um, and I see something, that's where my mind goes to, like, usually some sort of social commentary is, is more what I would like to do. But, no, whenever I... Whenever I come up with an idea, I just go with how the idea goes. Like, it's not all... I mean, I'm trying to get... I'm, I'm becoming more uh, personal, more autobiographical uh, as I, as I uh, go through. Just talking about personal experiences that I have and then relating it, you know, giving the commentary on that situation by making the, the idea that I have, like, the, the microcosm for... Th but this is what other people experience, and this is the generalization I'm making from that. You make yourself human and... and People can identify with it because they everybody goes through that kind of stuff. You probably weren't as vulnerable on stage when you first started, but did you always start with that kind of uh, I don't know, like observational commentary kind of thing, or did you start? I with... started when I started stuff. I I did I think start with trying to be more of a George Carlin type guy, where I would I would script out like this piece on, and I would talk about religion and I'd rant about it, and nobody wants to hear a 22 or 23 year old kid talk about religion. They just don't. Like, it doesn't matter how, what your points are, they could be extremely valid. You just come off like an idiot. Like, you, they're just, you know, yeah, great, but you're 23, what do you know? And it's a valid point, what, you know, there's, there's, I'm sure there, you know, I did know some things, but why, you know, why am I so angry? And I was forcing it down people's throats instead of being, you know, friendly and trying to, t like, hey, we're in this together, you know? You had an angry attitude when you were, when you started doing comedy, and you played in a couple punk bands back in the day. Were you uh, <laughs> were you an angry kid? Uh, yeah, I was angry at stupid things, and it was like again not really expressing myself properly. As stand up helping me with that, it did. Like I for a while, I looked at stand up as being like, as I grew as a stand up, I grew as a person. Like they were both parallel. Like it was like more of a journey of of trying to make myself better. <laughs> Last time I talked to you when you were home, I asked you if comedy was therapeutic and you said yeah a little but it shouldn't be clearly it is has it changed since then do you no it's i think it's therapy i think it's i call it it's rather than therapeutic i'd say cathartic it's like it 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 feels really good to express yourself but i don't therapeutic is i don't like that's there are some comics that treat it as if it's like a therapy where they just go up and say weird things that aren't funny but they just want I don't know what they want, and I and I don't I don't like that. Like it's like you know what, get on a couch and and talk to somebody, 
this is not for a room full of strangers. It's entertainment, so that intrinsically that has to be there. And if it happens to give you some sort of therapeutic effect, or as I say, cathartic effect, then that's good. That's fine. But it's oh, above all else, you, it's for them, not you. On some level. What kind of stand-up comics don't you like other than... Uh, I hate... I just don't like... I don't like comedy that you can see the formula behind it, and and you're just like, okay, yep, yeah, anybody could technically do that. That kind of stuff frustrates me, because I like this, and I take it really seriously, and I don't really like it when people, I consider a lot of that kind of stuff to just not be taking it seriously, and those those guys, you know, that's one of the frustrating things, is there's not a lot of work here, and those guys, they'll get work, and you're like, what, what's a, what about a comic who's, like, actually working? Where's, where's his venue? No real cool underground punk comedy scene where like where you can there is a hierarchy that you can rise up in and that's the frustrating thing is that those guys will get ahead probably further than you or or you know it's just yeah it's just frustrating i don't like i don't like anything that's like not nobody's you're clearly not trying to push anything at all like even just yourself not even not even like uh, make like a legit like I don't always have to watch comedy that has like a hard hitting social commentary. That's not what it all has to be. But it has to be like what are you doing to change something? You're 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 not telling me anything I haven't heard before. And that's when the novelty of it is. This is to me what waters down comedy when people can just go and see basically the same person in fifty different people. You know where you're like, well, I watched him for forty five minutes and I have no idea what type of person he is. Like I watched him talk. Just talk for 45 minutes, and I don't know what kind of guy he is, because there, he had no substance to what he was saying. I like substance. Why are Canadian comics not taken as seriously as other, as other places? You know, I wish I knew uh, why. I mean, it, uh, it, it's annoying, because um, some people really like it and really do respect like comedy. Um, and I don't think, you know, it doesn't have to be taken that seriously. It doesn't have to be like, really respected. It just needs to be respected as much as, you know. An, an another form of live entertainment that you would pay money to see. People look at like the comedy club as the overall business, which is well, here's what we we they're just trying to make money. Mm. But it should be trying to make money off of good quality shows and paying people properly, and you know it's just I mean you can get into that uh, for just never stop talking about it. But it's uh, I don't know. I think yeah I think they're they're trying to sell drinks, and this is why some people don't get kicked out of shows. This is why there's some hecklers that uh, stay, they let stay in and stay in because, well, they're buying drinks, you know, like, we can't throw them out, like, we need people here, and they're just, what, what can I, what can I do, how can I even argue with that, like, it's, yeah, I guess, keep them in and I'm leaving the country, <laughs> like, that's all I can do, like, I can't, I'm not gonna stay here and fight for the change so that it gets better, like, it's, I'm out, I'm a coward and I'm leaving, I'm, I'm sick of it, <laughs> it's, it's just, we don't respect ourselves, I think, <laughs> there's a lot of that, yeah. there's a lot of people that, like, are just willing to do, to do bad gigs for bad money, because pff, why not? I had this argument with a guy one time, where he's like, "Well, it's better than waiting tables," and I'm like, "Yeah, but I mean that you shouldn't look at it that way. You know, it's you're supposed to look at what you have as being a skill, something that is is something that other people can't do, and not I don't know if that's your bar, then then of course it's just going to keep going down because as you accept the crap, the crap just keeps coming and keeps coming like you can't once they once somebody finds out they can give you very little they're going to try to give you less and it's going to just keep getting let's see where where the, where the limit is you know so and if your limit is not waiting tables then it's pretty low <laughs> so what are the big things that need to change in, in canadian comedy in your opinion It's where do you start? Um, uh, people need to the the powers that be in comedy need to start treating the comedians like they're uh, something, you know. People so people can not like people care about individual comics. Like there's a lot of great comics in this country that don't get pushed ahead at all because there's no. It seems like there's no market to make Canadians famous in Canada. You know, people always say, well, Jim Carrey and, and Mike Myers, they're Canadians. It's like, yeah, but they had to leave and, like, do something else because no, it would have stayed here forever and nothing would have changed. Nothing would have ever, they would, you know, just be 
you know, bitter guys, you know, working the road. It's various levels of that and other, but I mean, it's, it's, it's a mess. I don't know what you would do to honestly fix it. Like, it's, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, so you're, you're moving to uh, England. Why do you, why are you moving to England? Um, Except for the last it, 10 but, minutes. Yeah, of... basically everything that's been said here. No, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, I want to leave. I wanted to leave before I got really bitter, which, I mean, this is based off of this conversation. Sounds like it's already happened, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah I love, I do, I do love Canada. And coming up in Toronto, um, there's a lot of uh, awesome rooms. And uh, the summer here has been fun doing a show a week. And people have come out to my shows here and supported. And there's, there honestly is a lot of good about Canada and comedy. The problem is, as I've said before, is that I do find like it's not taken as seriously as it could. Whereas in England, my understanding is that it is. I think it's a, a good a good choice to go to England for for what it is that I want to do because I don't really want to get into TV that much, like or movies. Like I maybe at some point, but I really just want to do stand up. And in the states, it's like, oh, you do stand up, cool. Do you, do you act? Do you want to do this? Whereas in London, it's like I'm a comedian. Like, oh, great. That's that's what you do. <laughs> like. Yeah. It's not expected that you you automatically want to do movies or whatever. So, uh, are you nervous about what's going to transfer into to English culture and like it, not only references and stuff like that, but also just the sense of humor? No, not really. I mean, I I'll have to figure it out. It'll be trial and error sometimes, and it'll be a little bit of me talking to some people and going, "Hey, well, do you think this would work here, or do you think this they'll get this reference?" But it, it'll probably I'll probably do it on a night by night basis of like, "Okay, I'm going to do these jokes tonight. Which one will work? Which one won't?" And it's just a matter sometimes I'm sure of changing a word here or there, maybe having to drop a part of a bit. I don't know how much of my material I'm going to lose, but the thing is, I always like writing, so. Uh, and like coming up with new stuff to put on stage anyway, so it'll just I'll just do that. I'm not yeah I'm not nervous. I'll be excited. I'm excited to get to a new place and try it out. See how it works. See how everything goes. Be fun. It's the fact that there's a picture of you right in the background of the interviews. Yeah, it's kind of strange. <laughs> it's uh. Not my idea. Do you have to? Good looking man. I like that picture. Not a bad picture. I thought it turned out alright. <laughs>